Hi, welcome to Learning of Video Game Art. In this workbook podcast, I would like to share with you one of the many methods for creating a terrain of another world with Autodesk Maya. Through these five minutes demonstrations, you will learn how to apply the game art techniques for prototyping a dune-like terrain as such with breeze. Like many of my other game art tutorials, the trick to compose a real-time visual that is graphically interesting lies in the art of texture mapping. For instance, to use this terrain of another world, I choose to use a tolerable normal map that is more budget-friendly than using the vertex displacement technique. To follow this tutorial, you will need to get yourself a texture map that provides you all the geological details that a terrain has. You can consider downloading this sample texture that I have prepared for you via this URL. Okay, as a start, let's simply create a polygonal plane that rests at the origin of our 3D viewport. Next, set the polygonal plane into a perfect square with a subdivisions of 20. Then, turn on the shaded display while hiding the grid away. With the polygonal plane in selection, do hold down your right mouse button to assign a new bleed material for our plane. In the attribute editor, I'm going to rename the material as terrain. After that, let's focus on the checker button of the bump mapping slot. Simply click on the checker button and link it with the file node. Now set the 2D bump node to tangent space normal. Then in the file tab, we are going to load a texture map that you have just downloaded. To perceive the effects of bump mapping, you will need to turn on the display texture option and followed by switching your viewport to render in a high quality mode. Here you shall see all the interesting relief details that derive from our norm map. Next, let us switch to the vertex mode as we are about to sculpt our terrain with the soft selection function. Simply select one of the vertices and hit the keyboard shortcut key of B for activating the soft selection. Then, just use the move manipulator for raising and shaping the form of a terrain. Should you find that the effect size of our soft selections is too great, you can readjust it to suit your needs. To do so, simply double click on the icon of the move manipulator. Then, in the two settings, do scroll all the way down to the section of soft selection. Change the fall off radius to a much smaller value and see how it turns out in our viewport. In practice, the smaller of a fall off radius, the finer control we shall get. However, for this demonstration, I will set it to the value of 3. Ok, next I'm going to duplicate this polygonal mesh for forming a much larger terrain. Beforehand, let us change the viewpoint point of this mesh by holding down the keyboard shortcut key of D and V together. Then, simply snap the pivot point to a corner vertex. Now let us hit the shortcut key of Ctrl D to duplicate the mesh and use the move manipulator to park the clone at the side. Then hold down the V key once more to snap a line with its counterpart. We shall fix the unwanted gaps after combining them with the merge vertices function. Do remember to turn off the soft selection mode with the B key again before you apply the merge vertex function. Due to the default trash hole of the merge vertex function is too small, we did not manage to seal off the gaps. Let us double click on the icon of merge vertex for assessing its option menu. You will need to set the trash hole to a much bigger value as the gaps are quite wide apart. For this demo, I will use a value of 1. Ok, and that fixes our problems. Next, you will need to activate the soft selection tool again for breaking the seam 
by raising its nearby vertices if you want to achieve a natural looking terrain. It will take you a while to break the symmetrical outlooks of this newly formed terrain with some reverse actions of pulling and pushing. Besides altering the terrain with random translations, some of the seams have to be soft with the function of softened edges. Lastly, you can consider using the scale manipulator for sculpting the terrain uniformly. And that's all for this demonstration. I hope you will find this technique to be useful for speeding up your workflow. Thank you.